namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavad Gita as it is chapter 16 text 21 translation and commentary by his divine grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada you know the verse? Trividham Narakasyedam. You say? Trividham. Say, say, say. Trividham Narakasyedam. Kama Rodas. Tara Lopas. Tasmati Dal. Four-year-old boy, ask him any verse from Gita, he can say it. Maybe a little bit of a struggle, but it's quite an achievement. He's shy, okay. So now we'll all chant that together. The verse is written here, you can all see it. <clears throat> I hope you can all see it. Three, please say three. three. Vidham, Vidham Narakasya, Narakasya Idam, Idam Dwaram, Dwaram Nashanam, Nashanam Atmanaha, Atmanaha Kamaha, Kamaha Krodhaha, Krodhaha Tatha, Tatha Lobhaha, Lobhaha Tasmat, Tasmat Etat, etat Triam Tyajit Trividam Narakasyedam Dwaram Nashanam Atmanaha Kama Krodhas Tatalobhas Tasmat Etat Trayang Tyajit Trividam Narakasyedam Dwaram Nashanam Atmanaha Kama Krodhas Tatalobhas Tasmat Etat Trayang Tyajit little confused there. He, he put Avam instead of Etat. Then he has to learn Sanskrit grammar, so it can't be Avam after, yeah. Yeah, then someone else, maybe the, uh, the father can also chant. Trividam Narakasyedam Dvaram Nashanam Atmanaha Kama Krodhas Tatalobhas Kama Krodhas Tatalobhas Tasma De Tatrayam Chajet Trividam Narakasyedam Dvaram Nashanam Atmanaha Kasma Krodhas Tatalobhas Tasma De Tatrayam Jajet Trividam Narakasyedam 
Vidham of three kinds. Narakasya of hell. Idam this. Dvaram gate. Nashanam destructive. Atmanaha of the self. Kamaha lust. Krodhaha. Actually, <laughs> every, it's the same word in Hindi, Canada. For the Western people, they need. But for Indian people, you all know what. Unfortunately, we all know what Krodha means. <laughs> anger. Anger, yeah. Tata. And I think you all know what Tata means. Huh? In, the, in the high level of language, you'll use the word ta Well, it has two main usages. One is yata tata, which means like this, like that. And then tata also means, it can be used in the sense of and. And Srila Prabhupada is given here, as well as. As well as. Which is another way of saying and. Lobha is the next one. And you all know what that means. Kama, Krodha, Loba, these three are being described here. Tasmat. Tasma. That you may not know. If you know little Sanskrit, then it will mean, yeah, therefore. Because of that. It's easy if you're looking at it in the smartphone or whatever. Etat. Now that's where Damara got a little confused there. Etat, Evam. They sound the same, but they have very different meaning. Etat means these. <coughs> Triam. Easy to understand. Three, three. See, even the English word is, seems to come from the same source. Triam, three. Tiajet. So tiaja, you get the sense of giving up. And tiajet, that, that <coughs> One must give up. One must give up. The form is imperative. You must, this must be done. Tyajit. This mu must be given up. There are different forms. Tyajya means it is give upable. It is, uh, what's a better way of saying that? It is re renounceable, something like that. But tyajit means must be given up. There are three gates leading to this hell. Lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give these up, for they lead to the degradation of the soul. Purport, the beginning of demoniac life is described herein. One tries to satisfy his lust, and when he cannot, anger and greed arise. A sane man who does not want to glide down to the species of demoniac life must try to give up these three enemies which can kill the self to such an extent that there will be no possibility of liberation from this material entanglement. <clears throat> Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrestham Manamapi Shachiputram Atrasvarupam Rupam Tasya Grajamurupuring Maturim Goshavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prabto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamnatosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitantam Sajivam 
Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Taitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vita Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare The author of this book is, who's the author of this book? Maybe a little difficult to say. Krishna is the speaker of Bhagavad Gita. Vyasadeva is the author. Ganesh wrote it down. But the author of this book is His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. He has that his name is there, Bhagavad Gita as it is. He's, but again, of course, uh, Srila Prabhupada will always say that he's not presenting anything new or anything that he made up. It is what it is the knowledge that Krishna has given, and it he's explaining it according to the way that the previous acharyas have explained it. Evang parampara praptam. This knowledge is received in disciplic succession. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada, he was an acharya. At the same time, he wasn't any ordinary acharya. No acharya is ordinary. Acharyam mang vijani yan navaman yeta karhi chitna martya buddhya suyeta sarva deva mayo guru. Do you know this verse? Prabhav, you're nodding your head like that. You're familiar with this verse? Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam, when instructing Uddhava, tells him that the Acharya should be considered to be me, just like me, <clears throat> should not be disrespected in any way. Na avamanyeta karhichit. In any way, at any time, for any reason. Now, Mar he should not be considered an ordinary mortal person. <clears throat> he is the representative of all the demigods and all the saintly persons. So an Acharya is never to be considered ordinary. But Srila Prabhupada was, even among Acharyas, uh, a towering figure. So the duty of an Acharya is to teach the Shastra. Archinoti, Ashastrani. Achare tapyatyapi. <clears throat> What's the next line? Uh, Achare tapyatyapi. Swayam acharte yasmat acharyas te nakirtitaha. One is known as an acharya <clears throat> who lives according to the Shastra, teaches according to the Shastra, <clears throat> and establishes the principles of Shastra. So Srila Prabhupada is always speaking the Vedic knowledge, which he called philosophy. Now in the, in the Western world, or philosophy means different kinds of mental speculations, but <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada taught the Shastra, but not exa exactly as A, B, C, D. This is the verse, this is what it says. Learn it. You can do that. Just like this boy has learned the Bhagavad Gita shlokas. Then he has to learn the meaning of the shlokas. I was just saying that this morning. Did you hear that this morning? I was, I was speaking in the Jagannath temple. Was that on live? That Srila Prabhupada, when in Dallas at the Guru call, devotees brought the boys and they were chanting the Sanskrit verses and Prabhupada asked, do they know the meaning also? He wasn't satisfied that they knew just the verses. It's a good start. But then, apart from the translation, one has to also understand the meaning in depth. And that Srila Prabhupada gave the purports, and he was always speaking this knowledge and explaining it. Philosophy means to understand this. So Srila Prabhupada would ex explain it with reference from Shastra, with reference from the Acharyas, and in a very logical way also. He would give different uh, 
different uh, logical explanations, and he trained his disciples to do that. Just like I was listening to a humorous exchange between Srila Prabhupada and some of his disciples, where they were, they, they'd just been in a conference where some professor who was Mayavadi type said that, well, everything is, everything is molecules and molecules are invisible. That means nothing really exists and everything is just a dream. So then one, one of Prabhupada's disciples who heard that, he said that, well, okay, just to demonstrate that your philosophy is true, we'll take an invisible chair and smash it on your invisible head. And, that, and it'll all be invisible and it's all a dream, so that's, it's, it's a meaningless. The pra- so the, the point I'm making here is that Srila Prabhupada's disciple had been trained so well by Srila Prabhupada that he could immediately come up with such a response. That if everything's just a dream, okay, then we'll smash the we'll smash the dreamlike chair over your dreamlike head, and it's all just a dream and doesn't exist anyway. <laughs> if if you if you want to live up to your philosophy, you have to be ready for that. But who will be ready for that? So Srila Prabhupada was always speaking this knowledge. Now you may wonder, why did I? Why am I saying this when the topic of the verse is calm, crowed, lobe, these are the three gates to hell? Because as an acharya, Srila, why does an acharya teach? Because he wants to help others to come to the platform of knowledge and understand what is our situation in this world. And we're asking people to chant Hare Krishna. And you may say, well, chant Hare Krishna and you'll feel happy. And a chant, we may say to people, chant Hare Krishna and it's a nice song and it sounds nice. But really, people have to understand this is a very serious matter. Chanting Hare Krishna is very joyful. And when there's something joyful, we don't usually put joyfulness with seriousness. The two things seem to be quite different, don't they? We'll be, okay, we'll be very joyful. Okay, enough, enough joyfulness and now we'll have seriousness. But the two things go together because chanting Hare Krishna is the means in this Kali Yuga for coming to the highest platform of life. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam Kalau, Nasjeva, 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 Gatira Nyata. There's no way to reach the ultimate destination beyond the world of birth and death without chanting the holy names of Krishna. It's very emphasized with the word Eva, which means certainly, Eva Kevalam. Kevalam here means it's the <clears throat> one way, there's no other way. And it's, so it's very much emphasized by stating it three times. So that's very joyful, but at the same time, there's a, there's a very serious understanding here that this uh, joyfulness that is on the platform of spiritual reality, that is reality, but uh, the alternative to not becoming Krishna conscious is to continue suffering in material life and what is that material life? It's all based on karma, krodha, loba. These are three gates to hell. Lust, anger, and greed. So this needs to be explained so that we can understand it with our intelligence. In the human form of life, there is intelligence more than the animals. It's not meant... For this God-given intelligence is not meant for living like sophisticated animals. Animals, they make some residence. The ants make an ant hill. You don't see them in Bangalore. But if you go a little bit outside in the country, you'll see ant hills. They're big 
quite big. <laughs> they build up. You don't have ant hills in the west. They may have underground residences in the west. They they go down in the earth and make the. Then the uh, the birds they make nests, and the human beings make big condominiums and apartments. But it's the same propensity. Eating, sleeping, mating, and, def and defending. Ahara nidra bhaya maitunam cha samane me tat nam. Humans and animals, they all eat, sleep, fear, which brings in defense, and mate. So what's the difference between it? What's the special propensity of human life? Dharmo hite sham atiko vishe sham dharmena hina pashubhya naranam Dharma is the special prerogative of human life. Without that, <clears throat> a human is just like an animal. Sometimes this verse is rendered jnanena dharma Ganehitesham, Ganohitesham, that, that, that uh, knowledge is the difference between human life and animal life. And the two go together because without, without knowledge of the higher purpose of life, then why should one follow dharma? So Srila Prabhupada has always given this knowledge, as Krishna has given this knowledge. Uh, without this knowledge, we'll simply remain on the platform of karma, krodha, and loba, as as are the animals. They they cannot an animal cannot think what is right and what is wrong. He judges right and wrong in terms of getting food, getting place for shelter, getting sex. A human is supposed to see that. Although these are necessities of human life, attachment to them entangles one in material life. So it's, it's, a, it's a conundrum that we need to eat, we need to sleep, we may, we, we may not need to fight, but we need to make some protection against the cold and the rain in this season and the heat in the summer season. And sex is also required in human society for perpetuating the uh, human race. But uh, So these are necessities, but at the same time, by becoming attached to that or desiring to do that any more than is required, we become entangled in materialistic life. Therefore, tyajet, that word tyag, tyag is required. The word tyag and vairagya, they're very closely associated. Tyag means to give up, and vairagya is a sense of not being attached to. So these things are required, and we put a lot of energy into fulfilling our needs. Before eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, people spend, here in Bangalore, most people spend most of the, and most of the, most of the world nowadays, people spend all their time working, 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 working. But the end of the day, to use that worn out expression, at the end of the day, all they get is some food, some place to live, and some sex. And that's it. And then at the weekend, they can go to a party, and that's called enjoyment. But no one's happy at a party. There. Uh, they're just some uh, loud laughing, but no happiness in the soul. <clears throat> so eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, yes. But then if we desire more than w what is required, we become entangled in material life. So it's, it's a very fine balance we have to keep. We have to eat. We have to sleep. 
But if we, it's like if we think, okay, I, I'll sleep. I, I, all right, I need some place. So some place will suffice. There, there is. Uh, I'm just staying in Jainagar, and there's so many uh, houses. Each house must be, if sale value must be, I don't know, a few crores, something like that. And then just outside on the street, there's some people have put some, put a f few bricks and some plastic on the top, and they're living there. There must be temporary workers. There must be some construction going on. When they're when they're asleep, and the wealthy people in Jainaga who are asleep, they're both sleeping. Do they feel any? <laughs> it's the same sensation, isn't it? Is it not? When you're asleep, you don't know whether I'm asleep in a luxury apartment or whether I'm in some busty on the side of the street. You don't know. It's the same thing. One should see it, but, but unless these things are pointed out, we don't know, we don't think about it. We become anxious to create more and more facilities for enjoyment. But we don't think that the, the dog is, the dog has the same, when the dog is eating, has the same pleasure as where we're eating. And then if we get birth after birth, we're going to become a dog, we're going to become a cat. We should think about these things. Therefore, uh, the acharyas, the, they <coughs> write books. They speak on these things so that we can understand these things and not become entangled in materialistic life. All the conceptions that people have, the, the ideas that people have, why they're passing their life, all the philosophy is based on this calm, krodha and loba. That just like all of you uh, growing up in middle class Indian families, then from an early age you get the idea you have to work hard, you have to study hard, work hard, isn't it? From a very early age, you have to get ahead. And the idea, what's the idea? That you, you, you study hard and later on you'll get a good job. Just like you've got a good job, right? How many hours a day do you work? Ten hours. Ten hours. Oh, that's, that's not so much compared to other people. And with commuting? commuting one, and one and a half hours. Yeah. Both, mm, both ways, if you put it together. So you've got a good job, right? <laughs> You're not sure. Yeah, you see. Yeah. That's what, when you were at the, the age of the toddler screaming there, when the, from that age you were told you have to get a good job. And now you've got a good job, but you're not sure if it's a good job. <laughs> it's good in as much as that's what people call a good job, but factually you get frustration and physical health problems and a lot of people in your situation get mental health health problems. Definitely stress, it's not called a mental health problem, but it's definitely mental and it's a problem. And does affect your physical health also. And here's a physiotherapist. All the people with good jobs, they have to spend a lot of their good salary going to the physiotherapist because they, you're one of his patients. So. <laughs> Because the good job is not very good for health. <laughs> so, but the, the, the point I'm making here is that the, the idea, the, all the idea, where does this idea come that, from that you have to study hard as a child and then work hard and that's good. Good job means it's good. This is what you should do, it's good. Well, it's an idea that, it's just an idea that it's good. So all the, the idea of what is good is based on karma. The idea that we, if you get a job by which you earn, how many rupees a month? You don't want to say? Yeah, you can tell. 150,000 rupees a month. That's a good job. Oh, people say, oh, that's a good job. Wow. 
Wow, good job. You were in America. How much were you earning? Dollars per month? Per month? 200,000 a year. 200,000 a year. They, in America, they talk in annual salaries mostly. How much was that in Indian rupees at the time? Shakuntala, do you have your, you don't have your, one, one crore, 1.4 crore a year, I see. Why did you give it up? You had a good job. You have a good job, but you're not sure if it's a good job. What is good? Why, why is it considered good? Because you have more money, and if you have more money, you have more opportunity for fulfilling, for fulfilling karma. But the problem is that it doesn't actually make you happy. It's the, it's the perennial myth of materialistic life that we will be happy by having more and more and more. But here, Krishna warns that <clears throat> karma, kroda, and loba. Kroda, that word literally means anger, but anger doesn't only mean shouting and slamming a fist on the table and slapping someone in the face. There's also internal anger, frustration. You, your general feeling of anger about everything in the world and everything around you. And then loba, the whole this whole modern society. How is it that they can motivate you to go to work and work hard? They're promoting the idea, isn't it? All the advertisements, the whole culture, the way of life. Get more, work hard. <clears throat> the uh, the young girls and boys are they're uh, inspired and encouraged to dress in a manner that they'll attract each other and to act in such a way that they'll attract each other. Uh, increasing karma. And then from karma means, okay, I, I got money, I have to spend it and I have to buy more and more things, get more and more. I'm earning one and a half lakhs a month. And then I have to hop jobs because over there I can get 180. <laughs> and when you're, you're in a new job and then you're looking around, what's the next one? Hop job, hop job, hop job, like this. So even uh, people may not believe in hell, but they're already living in hell in their own mind because there's no satisfaction. There's no uh, even, there's no love. There's no good feeling between people. And often, often we find people, they like to come to some religious gathering and religious, but happy. Let's, let's be happy at least once a week. And we'll come and we'll have some talk with some jokes and there'll be a Swami who'll make us feel good and we'll sing some bhajans and ah, Life is good at last. And then tomorrow, more, tomorrow is Monday. Back to the grind. Mm. So Srila Prabhupada is very kindly teaching all these things. The whole problem begins, Krishna speaks at the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. Now in chapter, this is almost the end of chapter 16. Chapter 16 means we're getting toward the end of Bhagavad Gita. There are 18 chapters. Krishna's instruction begins in the second chapter. And he begins, Krishna begins by teaching the difference between the body, which is temporary, and the self, which is eternal, the Atma. Elsewhere we find Lord Krishna, we find his his teachings in Srimad Bhagavatam, where in Srimad Bhagavatam the topics of Gita are elaborated in Srimad Bhagavatam. So Krishna therein speaks of Dehatma Buddhi, 
or identifying the self with the body, identifying the body to be the self. If one thinks I am this body instead of understanding I am an eternal atma, soul, distinct from the body, if he understands that, <coughs> then he's understood the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Then he'll be free from karma, krodha, loba, all these things. Of course, not just a matter of theoretically understanding, it's a matter of realization. Realization comes from sadhana. By hearing, we, we theoretically understand, then we understand we have to do sadhana to actually purify our consciousness. Tasmat etat trayang tyajit. Krishna says, these three have to be given up. How do we give it up? It's not like, if, if you say, for instance, ah, you, sh you shouldn't wear that t-shirt. It's something vulgar is written on it. So, okay, you can give it up. It, it's very easy, you just take it off, that's all. But it's not very easy to take, you just can't take off and on the spot give up lust, greed and anger. It, it's, we'd like to, but it's so much intertwined with our consciousness that we find it, it, it difficult to do so. Therefore, sadhana is required. And part of the sadhana is regularly hearing the teachings of Gita and Bhagavatam and understanding. We have to reinforce the understanding. I'm not this body. Therefore, what I desire for the pleasure of the body, that desire is my enemy. It's a gate to hell. It's, it's an enemy. So Lord Krishna speaks about this in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yasyatma buddhi kunape tridhatuke swadhi kalatradeshu bhoma ijadihi yatirta buddhi salile nakarhi jidjaneshma gnyeshu sa eva gokaraha. Krishna says that anyone who thinks that this body, which is after all made up of mucus, bile, air, and so many undesirable things. Anyone uh, who, thinking I am this body, thinks that, <coughs> well, I am this body, I was born in this land, therefore this land is glorious, it's wonderful, Indians say Mera Bharat Mahan. Pakistanis don't say that. British people don't say that. They don't feel it's my land. In every country they have songs like, This land is my land. This land is your land. Ever heard that song when you're in America? <laughs> then uh, everything's great in America. There are so many songs. There'll always be an England. No, there won't be. <laughs> There'll come a time when there won't be any England. But there's a song. There'll always be an England. Rule Britannia. Britannia rules the waves. That was time during the uh, British Empire. The British Navy ruled the waves. So, Rule Britannia. Britannia. All these nationalistic songs. If I, if I say to you, yeah, England, ah, England's green and pleasant land, that's another song. Some idea that Jesus went to England. Did he? Well, someone thinks he did. Will those feet be seen again in, will Jerusalem be seen again in England's green and pleasant land? If I speak to you about England's green and pleasant land, you don't care at all. But an Englishman may think, oh yeah, England. <sighs> oh, so we have to put this hand on the heart, right? England, England. The result of overly attachment, over attachment to the country is that you may be born again in that country. Oh, very good, very good, I'll be born again. You may be born as a cat or a dog or a tree or a porcupine, but you may be born again in that land. So it's foolishness to be attached to the country of one's birth. But 
because that's also a kind of karma to be attachment to the land of one's birth. Yasyama buddhi kunape tridhatu ke swati. Then uh, attachment to my wife, my children. Uh, even Krishna, he spoke the, this this verse which I'm speaking on now, yasyatma buddhi kunape. He spoke this at Kurukshetra. Krishna gave spiritual knowledge at Kurukshetra, right? Very well known, Bhagavad Gita. But twice he gave spiritual knowledge at Kurukshetra. He went there twice. You'll find it in the Bhagavatam. And actually, if you go to Kurukshetra by train, you get down at the train, at the train station, you'll see there are pictures of Krishna Bhagavad Gita, and there are also pictures of him speaking another time he came at the time of it painted on the station on the entrance pictures of him there also uh, at the time of the so there was a solar eclipse so Krishna went and at this time he spoke to the various sages sage means Rishi Muni they were all gathered there and he spoke this, that people who go to holy places like Kurukshetra simply to bathe, that's what you do during a solar eclipse. It's very auspicious to go during a solar eclipse to Kurukshetra and bathe in the Samanta Panchaka, the five lakes which were made by Parashuram from the blood of the Kshatriyas. Now there's water, you won't see blood. But if you bathe during a solar eclipse in that water, that's very auspicious. But Krishna says, anyone who thinks that the real tirtha, the real pilgrimage is simply bathing in the water, such a person, they are no more intelligent than an animal. They don't, un in other words, Krishna is giving the idea that the real purpose of going to a holy place is not served by simply bathing in the water, but by taking spiritual knowledge from the saintly people who gather there. So all these wrong ideas in the world, they all promote karma and krodha and loba, and they all lead to hell. <clears throat> it all begins with the misunderstanding that we are this body. And therefore we find that Srila Prabhupada again and again and again to his disciples, to members of the public, he would again and again and again make this point. We are not the body, we're eternal living beings, we have no real relationship with this body whatsoever. And then the fact that our, our real self is a part and parcel, an eternal servant of Krishna, but the first, the first thing to understand is that we're not this body. Because even if we say we're eternal servants of Krishna, but you don't make the point that we're not the body, you may end up with something like the Christian idea that we are the body and we're, we're related with God and then when God comes on the day of judgment, he'll put all our bodies back together again. Same body. They, they have that idea. I know, I was raised as a Christian, so they tell you that, that, that the, the Jesus comes and if you're a good Christian, he puts your body back together and transports you off to hell, uh, heaven. And then if you're not a good Catholic, or, then you get sent to hell forever. And you get a special body which uh, it gets burned all the time, but somehow or other doesn't disintegrate. So they're, they're so much fixed on the idea that we are the body that they, they think that even to, to go to God means you have to go in this body. So such a misunderstanding. <coughs> so this uh, beginning of understanding. We're not the body. If we think we're the body, we're, then we indulge in desire to fulfill, for this for fulfilling the desires of the body. And again, in the Christian conception, the idea is you go to heaven and you enjoy yourself. That's all. They have no idea that we have to serve God. 
In the Bhagavatam also, there are very many strong statements uh, about this, the consciousness that arises from identifying with the body and therefore indulging in sense gratification. Nunang pramata kurute vikarma yat indriya pritya aprinoti nasadhu manye yata atmano yam asanna piklesha asadeha Rishabdev, instructing his sons, says, certainly nunam pramata, completely crazy, people are crazy, insane, who perform sinful activities for the sake of indriya priti, satisfying the senses. When we're talking about karma, karma means the desire to satisfy the senses. This is not good, Rishabhadeva says. It's not good. <clears throat> uh, because it perpetuates material existence, which is full of suffering. Good job, well-paying job, big house, whatever. It simply perpetuates the suffering, that's all. Bill Gates is suffering with his, who knows, someone can say how much money he has. He's suffering. And he'll continue to suffer in the next life, unless he takes to Krishna consciousness. He's probably getting a bit old. You better go and tell him quickly. But will he listen? Not likely, because dhana dharma dhan or everything, all the teachings are there in Shastra. dhana dharma da Andha, this term is given in the Bhagavatam. People are very wealthy, they tend to become uh, <coughs> arrogant, infatuated and arrogant and blind to their real self-interest, even more than everyone else. Dhana Dharma Dandha. So this consciousness, let me enjoy life, it's not enough to understand that we're not the, this body because we may follow the Vedic teachings, but think that, okay, in the Vedas it says that if we do pious activities, we'll go to heaven. So we'll go. Then after some time we have to come back. Then, all right, we'll come back and we'll do some more pious activities and again we'll go up. Mm. That Taitang Bhukva Swarga Lokang Vishalang Kshine Punye Martya Lokang Vishanti. Then what happens next? Ang Tatrai Dharmam Anuprapana Gatagatam Kama Kama Labhante. People they go up to the heavenly planets, they enjoy Kshine Punye Martya Lokang Vishanti. Then they come back again. And, and then again they do pious activities. Then again they go up, and what is that? Karma, karma. Because of desire, they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, and if they make a mistake at some point, instead of up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, it becomes up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 down. If you make a little mistake, then you don't go up, you go down. And that's how material life goes on. So it's all based on uh, the, the thought that I am meant to un enjoy this body. I'm meant to enjoy life. So even though, even understanding that we're not the body is not enough in and of itself to make us free from material desire. You think, I'm not this body, well I'll enjoy this body and I'll enjoy the next body also. And the one after that. Once in Thailand, I asked one woman, because in Thailand every <laughs> Buddhist reincarnation, people believe. So uh, people, uh, they like to eat all kinds of horrible things, which I won't talk about now. Really horrible things. Uh, <coughs> their favorite food is pork. For your information, if you don't know, a pork means the flesh of pigs. Well, it's actually one... See, in English language, uh, they're eating pig's meat is so popular that in, in, in that culture that they, there are three words. There's pork, 
there's ham and there's bacon according to the according to the way they prepare it or something like that but pork is the general term pig's meat so i said to this woman so you know this reincarnation and you know that because of that in your next life you'll be have to become a pig i said doesn't that bother you and she said no that will also be fun we'll also be happy and enjoy ourselves such illusion <laughs> so to know that we are not the body is an essential beginning but it's not enough in and of itself to inspire us to come to the platform of endeavoring for self realization mm. this uh, i'm quoting from Rishabh Dave's instruction, his first instruction, Nayam Deho Deha Bhajangre Loke, Kashtan Kaman, say the word again, Kaman, Arhate Vidbujam, Tapo Divyam Putraka Yena Satam, Shudyad Yasmad, Brahma Sokyam Twananta. He speaks very strong words that having attained the human form of life, one should not act karma for the sake of karma for indulging the senses and enjoying the senses which even the animals that eat stool like pigs they also in actually this woman was saying will enjoy they enjoy but what is their enjoyment eating stool some devotees were telling me in the villages in india now they have this program that uh, all toilets no more outside defecation is the name of the government but that also produces a problem because the pigs don't get their natural food so they eat all the crops they dig up the carrots and everything so you saw now we're very clean we don't defecate outside but the pigs say hey you know we we also got our right <laughs> what happened <clears throat> now uh, one should not eat or, or uh, endeavor to in, enjoy life because after all the pigs are, the pigs are very happy when they get stool to eat on their level of happiness they they like it they enjoy it i i saw the first time i came to vrindavan i was doing 1976 i was doing vrindavan parikrama early in the morning after mongolati just uh, on a veranda the boy came out and pulled down his pants and then the pig was waiting under underneath because he knew every day same time the uh, you get the nice fresh hot tasty <laughs> some landed on his head which is a bit of a problem for him but anyway he got it he knew it was it's great you know fantastic really good well, another time in vrindavan i saw in the in the drain one little piglet had got fallen in the drain was trying to because why do they go in the drain because the water comes with all the stool so that's for them great just sit there watch this but the little piglet got inside couldn't come out and the mother was wondering how to get the little piglet out the, the piglet could just jump in and there's a river of stool that's one of the one of the hells right there are all kinds of hells creamy bojan you go in one hell and then all the little insects and the bugs are eating you it's no joke so the rishabh dev says uh, that one should perform divine austerities austerity in one sense everyone is taking We're go going to work is an austerity but one should perform austerities for the sake of purification of consciousness by which one becomes qualified for eternal spiritual bliss 
This is required to be understood. The Srila Prabhupada was always teaching this. We should, we should live for eternal spiritual bliss. Otherwise, we get caught in, in all these wrong ideas, which may, they may sound right to us. Just like we have our rights, we have our, the, the, the Tamils should get the, the water, the, the Kanadigas are keeping too much water. It's our right, we need the water. Uh, uh, it sounds, and then they, then they have to think, well, should they give it or shouldn't they give it? And, and so, many, so many problems arise when we identify with the body instead of understanding that if we live in this world in the way that Krishna tells us to live, then everything will come. Everything will be given by Krishna for, for what we need to live in this world, but we're not supposed to live in this world simply for enjoying this world. We are meant to live in this world for serving Krishna. So all these so-called philosophies, all these ideas come out, all wrong ideas which are, we can say this idea, have a good job, work hard, it's actually sending us to hell because it's promoting lust from which comes anger, from which comes greed, from which comes illusion, from which comes pride, from which comes envy. These all drag us to hell just because we, we don't have the right idea. It's, it's, very, it's very prominent in the world today, especially in the world today where you're promoting everyone, everyone should be a great success. And uh, how can everyone be a great success? Because success means you're ahead of others. But uh, so everyone can't be ahead of everyone else. Only, uh, in a race, only num only, there's only one winner, right? And you might get, there's a gold medal, and a silver medal, and a bronze medal, and a bronze medal consolation prize and all the rest they're all failures so it's like that you can't all be a not everyone can be a success not everyone can be ahead of others so it means that a few people are ahead and everyone else is frustrated and the ones who are ahead are also frustrated because they thought they'd be happy by having by being a success but it doesn't make them happy either so the, all the wrong ideas in the world by which everyone is suffering, actually. People come to Bangalore because they think, I'll, I'll earn money and I'll be happy. But everyone is suffering. No one is happy. It all comes from the misunderstanding, I am this body and I'm meant to enjoy it. And Hindus as much as anyone else. Hindus should know that there's rebirth. And that this, they should know, right? At least Hindus believe in reincarnation. But it's a case of pasha napina pashati. They see everyone is suffering. They should know that this rebirth is not good, but still they go on as if this life is all in all and everything is there. And what happens in society? Gradually everything deteriorates because calm is being promoted. No one should go without taking prasadam. Give them prasadam. Don't let them go without prasadam. If you have to go, sorry, but sorry to see you go, but please don't go without prasadam. Just make some arrangement, they're going to get prasadam. Don't let anyone leave without taking prasadam kindly. Some rules here. What happens to keep people? Why are people going to go on working, working, working? You have to motivate them get money and then you have to spend it. You have to buy so many different clothes and people who have more money than they need for their basic needs, then they're, they're, it's promoted. You buy, then they have more clothes than they need. A car, maybe you need to get from A to B, but then you have to have, it's not enough if you're earning lots of money to have some simple Maruti. You have to have a more expensive car Actually, for getting around in Bangalore, the most practical thing is a two-wheeler. But for prestige, you need a car. And then the car is traffic jam. And then the two-wheeler becomes more 
appropriate in the traffic jam, or more helpful in the traffic jam. So yeah, the, then karma, then comes prestige, and then loba, you have to have more and more things to show your prestige, and then pride, and all these things come. But what happens is, in societies where karma is promoted more and more, then people start to think, well, actually, I don't need all this money to enjoy myself. Uh, if, in a moral society, you have to get married to enjoy sex. But then people may think, well, it's so much struggle and so much difficulty, we can just have sex without marriage. And then it comes to the level of animals. And then society degrades in the name of freedom. Then there's no responsibility. And then people don't care about, I don't have to work, I could just on the street, like an animal, have sex. What's wrong? What's wrong with it? They'll say. And then the whole society degrades. People become very selfish. You see, in married life, there's a sense of responsibility. Why are you working so hard? You may say, I'm not working so hard just, just because I want lots of money. I want to support my family. But when that's uh, but if you think, well, why, then you start thinking, why should I bother all this headache, all this family? There, 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 there's a nice girl in the office, I'll just take her and enjoy her. And uh, she becomes pregnant, then abortion. So uh, when karma is promoted and we don't, then it covers the intelligence. Avritya <laughs> dehinam. It covers the in, uh, it covers the intelligence, and we don't think. Well, I'll have to suffer sinful reactions for illicit sex, for abortion. You don't think. You don't bother. You don't care. And then the whole society goes to hell, and people become in this way also very selfish. Instead of thinking. I have a responsibility to others. No, let me just enjoy myself. That's all. And gradually you see that in, in Bangalore, more and more people, they don't care about their elderly parents. Even they're married, they don't care. Or they don't want to marry. Why should I marry? I can enjoy by myself, by myself. So in this way, the whole society goes to hell. There's no... No, even materially, there's no sense of responsibility. So when Krishna says that these are three gates to hell, it's not just something in the future, but right now we can see it. it it's right here among us. So how important it is to understand this Bhagavad Gita. So you train this boy to understand the verses and understand the philosophy and preach the philosophy, at, at least live the philosophy. Very great responsibility to have children, to train them in such a way that they don't get born again. Guru na sasyat, svajano na sasyat, pita na sasyat, janani na sasyat, daivanga tatsyan na patischa sasyan na mochyad ya samupeta mrityam. Rishabdev again, there's the third time I've quoted him today. You should all study the Srimad Bhagavatam. He says that one should not become a guru unless he can deliver his disciples from birth and death. One should not become related with anyone in any way unless he can deliver them from birth and death. And should not become a father or mother unless he can deliver them from birth and death. One should not take a respect from others unless he can deliver them from birth and death. It's a very great responsibility. So you, it's a good start. Teach him the verses of Bhagavad Gita. And then teach them to live like that. Okay, I'll finish now. Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow it's back to work. So I won't delay you any further, unless anyone has any questions about this. It's all easy to understand, right? I didn't say anything that was... I was talking philosophy. But there was nothing difficult to understand. It's all 
quite obvious and apparent. But unless it's pointed out to us, we won't see it. That's why it's necessary to study this Bhagavad Gita as it is and Srimad Bhagavatam and regularly hear these topics explained. Because unless it's pointed out to us, we don't see. Yeah, so is there any question, please? Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, you said uh, Sanskrit, uh, it is very important that we learn Sanskrit verses and all that. Uh, but doesn't uh, Srila Prabhupada's meaning, which he has given in the purpose, is enough or we should understand Sanskrit also? Did I say learning Sanskrit is important? I said it's good to teach the children the verses. But then I also said it's important to teach them the meaning. Yeah, yeah definitely. The, 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 to understand the meaning is more important than memorizing the verses. But memorizing the verses is a good tool to help that knowledge to be fixed in our mind. If, if we can remember, just like for instance, Kama krodas tatalo tasmat etat triang tiajet. Give prasad. If we remember, it's, it's, it's easy to remember in Sanskrit. It's like a sutra. That these are the three gates to hell, therefore they should be given up. So it helps us to. Uh, helps us to retain that knowledge. Plus it's the words of Krishna, which are very purifying. And it's easy for Indians to remember these verses because many of the words you know also. And if you learn many verses, then you can also learn some of the meanings of the Sanskrit words, which are, come up again and again and again, which are not normally used in spoken Indian languages today, just like I was saying the word tata. It's, uh, it comes up again and again in Sanskrit. So then you get to understand the meaning when you read it again and again. And for children, yeah, they, 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 the mind needs something. The, the mind should be trained. So it's a very good training to train them to, to learn these verses. Any other question? No, then we'll finish. Hare Krishna. Let us thank Maharaj by loudly chanting Hare Krishna Mahantra once. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Maharaj travels all over the world and preaches about Krishna consciousness. And he also has written several books where we can be in touch with the teachings of Maharaj and learn more of them by well, reading his books all well, the time. The fir the first thing is, everyone should have Gita as it is. Does everyone have in their home Bhagavad Gita as it is? Or in your, some of you are not, some of you are just staying in a hostel, huh? Is it? Anyone here? Staying in a working man's hostel, or s is it? Do you have, everyone has a copy of Bhagavad Gita. When, where you're going back to where you stay, you have a copy of Gita as it is. You all have that, okay, good. Then the next thing is Srimad Bhagavatam. Everyone has that? Srimad You don't have Srimad Bhagavatam. You must get. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, you're coming, you're putting on tilak. You must get Bhagavatam. Otherwise, you're spoiling your life. Really? Uh, Bhagavatam. Yeah, everyone should have a set of Srimad Bhagavatam. Really, this is serious stuff. You're the human life. You got after so many births. Srimad Bhagavatam gives us the, the knowledge that we require to become fully Krishna conscious. Uh, who doesn't have a set of Bhagavatam in their home? 
you also don't have. Anyway, put your hand up and then we're not going to force you to take it, but, <laughs> but, really, but we'll, we'll convince you. <laughs> Even if we force you, it'll be for your own good. Just like the, the mother, sometimes the children don't want to eat and they force them to eat. Why do, and the child is screaming. Why does the mother do that? Because she knows it, the child needs that. So you're so kindly come here and you've listened to a difficult to listen to talk. Now most people wouldn't like to listen to the things I'm talking. That means that you're already you already have good serious interest in spiritual life. Now you you must solidify that by taking a set of Bhagavatam. So you know all the people? Okay, take a shot with their hands up. <laughs> and uh, no, please don't worry. It's, it's really the best benefit that you'll get. We're not saying this because we, for any other reason but then for your benefit. We really desire your benefit and therefore you must have Bhagavatam in your home. And then you must read it, of course. So just see everyone. Ananda Vasudev. Did you make a note? See, see everyone yes, who doesn't have Bhagavatam. I'm going to make a list and then we will deliver okay, but, to their house. Yeah. Personally. Well, you, they have to agree to do so. Okay, already we got one who's agreed. You've also agreed, wow. okay. It may be people are coming for the first time, they're not fully prepared for that, but anyway. Give them a set of Bhagavatam. Sure. So did you see there about five hands went up there? There's the gen raise your hands? Everybody who wants, uh, would like to take No, even if you don't want, if you don't have it, just raise your hand. <laughs> if you don't want, you should want. <laughs> I know most of them, Guru Maharaj. I'll personally make sure that they need uh, Bhagavatam. Yeah, but look, you have to just take a note of everyone. Okay, one, two, I know, four, three, four, five. Okay. All right, so you can advertise my books also. And if, if those who wanted to take photos, you can take photos now also. <laughs> <laughs>